Hey everyone, it's Javi here, and this is the fourth and second to last video of my tutorial series on web development with Next.js, where we are building a simple blog website. In the last video, we learned how to pre-render blog data using get static props. And in this video, we're gonna be taking that to the next step, using that blog data in order to create statically generated dynamic routes for each of our blog posts. If you happen to be new to my channel, then welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles, and practices to help you bring your ideas to life and build digital products. If that sounds like something that you're interested in following, don't forget to subscribe. We want to design our blog in a way that each of our blog posts is going to live in its own page. And we're gonna do so through dynamic routes in a way that the ID that is associated to each of our blog posts is gonna be what defines the URL of each of those pages. First things first, let's jump into VS Code and set up all the files we need. As you can see, we have our VS Code already loaded up with our project folder and all the files here on the left. If I were to go to the browser, to our local host, you can see that this is the state where we were last time where we configured the layout and most importantly, this information right here that we are fetching through get static props from our blog posts that are inside our file system. Now, the first thing in order to set up the dynamic routes for these is to create a new file inside our pages slash post directory. And we're gonna give this a special naming convention that's specific to Next.js where we are using square brackets to write down this ID key and I'm gonna put .js. So these brackets in Next.js is the nomenclature that conforms a dynamic route. At this stage, we can also go ahead and get rid of our first post.js since we're not gonna be using that anymore. So let's delete that one. There we go. And now for the time being inside our id.js file, we can just come over here to the learn documentation and grab this code snippet for the time being, which is just gonna make sure we have our layout component in there for styling, as well as a little bit of a placeholder uh, post function here with the layout wrapping it. So I'm gonna hit save for that. The next step that we're gonna wanna do is open up our post.js file inside our lib folder here, and we're gonna add a new function called get all post IDs that's going to return the list of file names in our post directory, which is gonna become handy information in just a second. So let's go ahead and do that. We can even re remove this if we want to. And I'm just gonna hit save to make sure that is in place. And now we will import that inside get static paths, which is what we are going to introduce inside our dynamic route.js file. So let's open up that up again. And in here, we can go ahead and copy this, which is going to contain the import of all post IDs that we just created as a function in our post.js. And we are going to also add the following code above the post component. Now that we have this function in place, we can go back to our id.js and there is some code here that we're gonna wanna introduce. So the first things first, right? We want to make sure that we are importing that data that we're getting through posts into our id.js in order to get that list of IDs from all of our blog posts. And the last piece that we're missing here is just a function that's gonna be able to leverage that data that we just imported. And we're gonna do that through a new function called get static paths, which is going to be assigning all of that data to the paths variable here. So I'm going to simply copy paste this into our ID file, and we should be good to go here. So what we've done so far in the video is set up two functions across two different files that are going to give us all the possible IDs of our blog posts. Now, the next step is gonna be fetching the right data for a blog post given its ID. 
In order to do that, we can go back to the documentation here. And the first thing that we want to do is going to be add this get post data function at the bottom of our post.js, which is going to return the post data based on the ID of the post that we're referencing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that inside our post.js. So let's come over here and at the bottom, I'm just going to add a couple spaces there. And as you can see, what is happening is that we are going to be fetching the information that's needed. We're going to be using gray matter to parse the metadata section of our blog post. If you'll recall, we have this very specific section right here that we are parsing through gray matter, which we installed in a previous video. And we are going to be combining the data that we generated with the appropriate ID. So that is what get post data is going to do based on that ID. Now that we have that, we can go to our id.js file and we can replace this that we had right there. So let's go into that. I'm going to hit save for this. And in ID, it's saying we can go ahead and replace this piece right here with this, which essentially means that we are adding a new import. So actually we can just write that down and this is going to be the new function we just created. So get post data. Let's go ahead and do that. Get post data. There we go. And now we are adding this function of get static props, which is going to get the post data that we are leveraging through this new function and return it as props that we can then use within the post. So I'm going to copy paste this just right about here. And there we go. So now that we have get static props allowing us to introduce that data into our component through uh, props, now we can go ahead and update the post component with those properties that we are using through post data. So we can just grab this uh, updated post component. And as you can see, it is leveraging the post data object as the props that we are getting through get static props, as you can see right here. And we're simply going to be updating the layout here to leverage those properties. So title, ID, and date. The last thing that would be missing there is the markdown content, which we are going to do just about now. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to come here to my very empty posts and I'm going to paste this function right here. That's updated with everything that we want. I'm going to make sure everything is saved at this stage. And now, as mentioned, if we were to go to localhost 3000 and then to the appropriate dynamic route, you can see that we have, um, as specified, we have posts and then slash, and then here is the ID of the post that we wanted. So if I close this and I go to the other one, you can see that it is working as expected. So that is pretty great. The last bit that we are missing here inside this layout here for our post component is the markdown data. So in order to get that in place, we are going to be using this library called remark which is going to allow us to render the markdown content. So in order to do that, the first thing that we got to do is install it. So I'm not going to close this terminal right here because it's got my whole local host thing going on. So I'm just going to create a new terminal through the VS code. And as you can see, you can switch between terminals right here, very handy. And I'm going to just run this npm install remark, remark HTML. So that should install everything that we need for us to make this work. So that works just as expected. And now we can import that inside our post.js. So let's go into here and we're going to add two imports, one for remark and one for remark dash HTML. So let's go ahead and do that. Going to hit save. And now we can update the get post data function using remark. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and let's just quickly see 
the changes, right? So this is going to be inside that same file. So get post data, as you can see, it's the one right here. And I'm going to be removing this and placing this one right there. So essentially here, the new stuff that's going on is this one right here. So we are processing the content through remark and that is going to be converted then into a content HTML variable that we're then going to be referencing inside our post page. I think it's worth mentioning here that there is an async keyword uh, and that is because we are fetching the data asynchronously from remark. And that means that we have to do one other change in the way that we handle get static props in id.js. We have to also include the keyword await. So let's go to id.js and we have to come here and as you saw, add an await here right before get post data. So let's do that. Let's add await, hit save, and that should be good to go. Now, in order to actually see the markdown content inside each of our posts, we have to update the post component inside our dynamic route file. And we're going to be doing that by rendering content HTML, which is a variable that we just described. And we're going to be using the dangerously set inner HTML component. If you're curious about why that's named the way it is, um, have a look at the link here from the React documentation. Um, it's just basically something around security. Um, and, and then, so let's, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing for simplicity and inside id.js. Here you see we have our existing post component. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to hit save on this one. So now we have post leveraging post data. We are getting title, ID, and date from post data. Uh, and then we have another div here that is going to be converting the, or rather it's going to be rendering the markdown data that we got through remark. So if I hit save, and now we go back to either of these websites, we should see that we have all the information that we wanted for each of these posts. So as you can see, we have these that are being handled through this section right here, through post data that we are getting through get static props. And also the second piece is through remark, uh, how we are rendering the markdown content. So that is for one of the posts and then the other one is going to be this one right here. So there we have it. We have successfully taken everything that we wanted in terms of the data for our blog post and we put it into a dynamic route. Before we give this a wrap, there is a, another section here inside the learn documentation that I just want to quickly walk you through and then show you the end result. Uh, it just has to do with polishing. So as you can see, there's a couple of uh, steps here that I encourage you to take in order to polish up your website, because in the next video, we're going to talk all about deployment and actually getting this into a deployed version through Vercel. So these are just the last few things that you're going to want to do uh, before you put this into production. I could go ahead and show you my website here, which I have created using the learn documentation here from Next.js. And you should end up with something like this. So uh, as you see, we have this section here that we've added uh, and now it's properly styled. And you see that if I hover over this, it's going to the appropriate dynamic route that we set up in this video. If I click here, you can see that we have the title tag appropriately giving me the post ID for, for that title. And here you have all of the content that we just configured uh, properly styled. So you see this one is using the CSS uh, utility snippets that we have. The data is properly formatted and all of this information here is properly formatted as well. And that is all for this video. So as a quick summary, what we looked at is setting up dynamic routes for each of our blog posts in a way that now if we head over to our index or homepage, 
you'll be able to have a list of all the blog posts that you've defined through your file system. And these are gonna be properly linked through those polishing details in the end where we are interconnecting everything through the link component. And then when you go into each of those, you have, first of all, a section that you are getting through get static props and uh, post data. And then at the bottom underneath that, you will have the markdown content that is rendered through a library called Remark that we installed also in this video to get you all the content you need for each of your blog posts statically generated through dynamic routes. In my next video, which also happens to be the last video of this Next.js tutorial series, we're gonna take everything that we've created up until now and deploy it using the Vercel deployment platform. As usual, I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, if there is anything that you would like to share or you have any questions or thoughts about anything that we covered in this video, don't forget to mention that in the comments section below. I hope you're well and stay safe and I will catch you in the next one.